what is going on welcome back to the channel today we're going to work on something a little different uh well for me at least and that is this mustang so this is my girlfriend's 07 gt she's uh had it since new and uh she's wanted to lower it for a while so that's what we're gonna try to do today with these uh, so i got her this set of ibox this is the sportline kit for 10135 uh, as you can see here pretty nice springs can't really say much about them they haven't been in anything that i know of but uh the reviews are really good so i've never worked on this car or any mustang for that fact so uh it's gonna be new to me but i did lower that car twice i put springs on it put air right on it i put springs on my grand prix some years ago so not super new to this but uh you know it is new in a sense that i've never touched one of these cars so we'll take some measurements and see where we're at with this uh, the front is supposed to be two inches down. The rear is 1.6. So we'll see what kind of wheel gap we got right now. We'll probably measure from ground to wheel lip as well, just to see. So right now, in the rear, we have about uh, about two and a half inches to the top of the tire, somewhere right in there. And then uh, in the front, we're probably inch and a quarter or so let's see what it is from the ground up need a little more all right so from the ground we're about 28 and an eighth somewhere right in there about 28 and an eighth just about give or take a little bit in the back we are 29 and a half yeah right at, yeah right about 29 and a half so that gives us a good uh estimate of where we're starting so with that i guess let's get to work i'm gonna start in the rear first seems like it's probably gonna be the easiest since it's a live axle should just be able to drop it down pop the springs out put the new ones in and work on the front which are definitely going to be much harder um, all right let's get to it All right, so I got the car up at jack stands. The wheels are off. Uh, something a little odd here. The sway bar end link, which is the first thing you're going to take off. So you're going to take the end link off. You're going to take the shock off. And then you can drop the, the axle down and the spring should just come right out. Um, this has a 15 millimeter bolt head and an 18 millimeter nut. So I'm not sure if this was replaced at some point or if this is factory like this but uh from what i saw online this should have been 19 and 19 but this looks original the nut looks original the bolt is rusty it looks original so uh, i'm not really sure um this looks like it's never been out and i confirmed that was also 15 millimeter as well put the socket on here fits right on so Hopefully these aren't on too tight and I can just zip these right out and drop this rear end down.
All right, that was pretty easy. Just gonna pull up this one shot over here out of the housing, a little bit of rust, holding it in. But uh, hopefully these flames just pop right out the rear end. Just hanging right now. Should be good. They got a lot of miles on them, so they're probably just stuck in here. So here's our stock spring next to the IBOC. You can see it's a bit shorter. It's also a progressive rate versus this like standard rate spring. All right, so the way this goes in is, uh, well, kind of the way we have it right now. But uh, there's these little pigtails on the end here and when it's in the car this bottom pigtail should be facing the front side of the housing so you see it right now if I put it like this this is how you want it in the car so you can see here's the end of it that would be facing the front of the car and then rotate it towards the front of the housing so it should look just like this inside of the uh the car. Less on it, remember, leave the rubber isolators in the bottom in the top. You don't want to take those out for whatever reason you've got them out. They go in much easier than they come out since they're shorter than the springs. This one, because of the curl, it's going to be on the rear, but the driver's side should be on the front. And the progressive rate spring, you should have the thicker amount bunched up coils at the bottom. The spaced out coil should go on top, and that'll be your cushion, essentially. So now we're just reassembling. We got the springs in. We're going to put the shocks back on, torque them down. Uh, 85 foot-pounds on the shocks, 52 foot-pounds on the sway bar end links. So we're going to do that, and this will be wrapped up, put the wheels back on, and the rear's done. So the last thing you got to do is replace the OEM bump stop here. So it's two T40 Torx bolts. And then this is the factory bump stock. This is the new IBOC one. Um, it's a little confusing because if you look at it, it's like the same height, but it actually installs like this. So you're going to pull this one out and it goes in there. And if you look at it, it's much shorter. So uh, it won't be on the bump stops uh, when it's riding. So. I'm gonna pop this guy out. Hopefully these aren't too bad and uh, pull this rubber out of this piece and separate it off the housing. And that should be about it. Yeah. 
Okay, here we go. Can we get this thing? Pop down in there? That should be good. And just repeat on the other side. All right, so we're back on the Mustang today and uh, we're gonna work on the front. So hopefully I have everything to get this all done. Um, from what it looks like, we got 13 millimeter bolts here that hold the strut into the uh, tower. And then this is a 21 millimeter that is uh, on top of the strut. Got your wheels and then uh, from what I saw, the spindle is, I think, 18 millimeter. And then there's the, uh, I think the brake line. And uh, that should be, oh, the sway bar end link. That's what it is. Sway bar end link, brake line, spindles. And I think it should drop out. And then we got to compress the spring, which is the uh, fun part. So uh, I guess let's get right to it and see what happens. All right, so yeah, this does get discarded. Uh, this smooth, longer part goes on top, it looks like. So I'm gonna pop this inside of this boot. It looks like this might snap in here. And then, uh, and then you can slide this whole assembly So that looks like it sits in there pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if it should go further in. It looks like it sits in there pretty good like that. And that looks, that looks right. Yeah, because that's going to seal off the top there, keep the dust off the bottom. Yep. Okay. So we're going to call that good like that. Put the new spring on. Okay. So okay, and that drops right on there. Now this is almost low enough where the nut can go on, so it's not gonna be uh, needing much compression to get this top plate to go back on which is uh, is nice you can see the uh, the difference in height here is is quite drastic uh, from the stock spring Uh, the only thing you got to make sure of is the spring location. So the bottom can, when you compress it, 
it can spin on you because now you've taken all the load off of the uh, the strut pushing up on it. So when you take the spring compressors off, make sure that it is still lined up where it needs to be. All right, so we got the strut slid up in there. We got the 13 millimeters tightened down up here. We're gonna put this clip back in for the brake line, or actually that's like uh, probably the ABS sensor. And then this is the bracket for the brake line, which we're gonna use a 10 millimeter, hook it back up here. Two 18 millimeter bolts for the spindle, and then the 118 for the sway bar. And uh, then we'll come back up here and tighten up this uh, guy here. All right, and that's wrapped up. So you can see we got our spring in, brake line is in, sway bar end link. Uh, something to note with this, these can spin freely inside of this housing, the, the bolt. So it can be difficult to get out or on. So what I did is I used a jack to put some tension on the bolt so the bolt couldn't spin. So either jacking it up or lowering it down and put a little tension on the bolt through the bracket and that allowed the nut to come off without the bolt spinning. Just something to think about. You can also use a wrench. If you look on the end here, it's hex. So you could just put a wrench on the end and put another wrench on this guy and spin it off. Um, I obviously didn't do that, but it seemed to work out all right. I gotta torque these guys down and uh, should be it. We're gonna rinse and repeat on the other side and uh, we'll catch up after that. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all the same stuff. I'll just show you what the uh, after uh, effects are of the whole kit install. Uh, one thing when torquing, uh, this was 85 foot pounds for the sway bar and these are 148 foot pounds for the spindle. So here we go, here's the final result. Got it all wrapped up back down on the ground. Looks a lot better. Probably needs to settle a little bit, hasn't been driven so could be a little bit off, but uh, still much, much better than it was before. We are talking about that gap earlier. I thought this was going to be a bit lower. Actually, let's grab that tape measure again and see where it's sitting right now. I think the uh, back was at 29 and a half and the front was at like 27 or something. Let's do the driver's side since that's what we did before. Again, it's going to be a little bit off because it hasn't been driven yet. But initial, let's see where we're at. We're about 26 and three quarters or so. Somewhere right around there, 26 and, uh, I don't know, maybe seven eighths, something like that. In the back is just over 27 and a half now. So after uh, the front went down, the back went down a little more, which is good. Hopefully it settles even a little bit more. It would be nice to get that down below 27 and a half and get that 26 and a half or so. And yeah, looks good though. Looks real good. I think she's gonna be super happy with it. So that's it for now. If you have any comments, questions, put them below. Can't guarantee I can answer any of them, but uh, we'll try. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.